Welcome to this chemistry tutorial on running a complex workflow in the cloud on P3HT. As always, you can get to the chemistry documentation at this link and see the other tutorial movies. Now we assume you've already started up a remote cluster, a server on the cluster, and pushed over the example. And these are outlined in other tutorials. Here are instances at AWS. Here is the notebook used to create the cluster. We're starting at AWS. We're going to start up six nodes. And we're choosing an instance that has NWChem and LAMPS, including all of the chemistry packages. Here's the notebook where we've pushed over our P3HT example. And here we are on the remote server. So let's go into this example. We have two notebooks, one that sets up the run directories, one that manages the workflow, and here we have a collection of special Python functions that will help enable the workflow. And these are essentially wrappers around the stream library functionality. So we'll start this up. And this essentially uses stream templates to create these run directories and populate them with templates for input files and submission scripts. Now here is the notebook that will be managing the workflow and it uses chemistry wrappers around the Dask project to manage a complex workflow that involves LAMP simulations, NWChem simulations, and stream functions in order to facilitate communication between them. So let's start up two of the main chemistry Dask objects that manages those functions. And here are the classes that will manage submitting scripts to our HPC cluster. These are settings that tune it for the particular instances we have, given the number of cores, this is 16 cores per node, and how many cores are efficient for each type of job. There's one for NWChem, and one for small lamps jobs, and one for large lamps jobs. And here is the object that loads the specific functions needed for linking together NWChem and LAMPS in this P3HD workflow. Now we need to set up the actual steps. And using this chemistry function that creates delayed Dask functions, we can essentially link together these different steps. And we are linking together stream functions that help set up molecules and set up and analyze the simulation codes themselves, be it NWChem or LAMPS. This is the initial workflow for the thiophene molecule. And now we can see a graph of those steps. This sets up thiophene, does initial relaxations on the molecule, calculates partial charges, and then has a, a short run for lamps to equilibrate it to make sure nothing blows up. Here is a similar workflow for hexane. And now these are the jobs that will join together hexane and thiophene into the hexathiophene molecule, link them together into the P3HT molecules, and generate our thin film and equilibrate it. Let's look at this section. And again, these parameters are specifying the dependencies of each job on what needs to run before it can start and complete.
So now we're actually starting this workflow. We're beginning by constructing and equilibrating the thiophene and hexane molecules. We're setting them up and waiting for the initial equilibration runs with lamps and NW Chem. Now here we see the thiophene has completed first, but the step at which they're joined together to make the 3-HD molecule has to wait on the hexane. Now we see that it's completed. Now they can be joined together. And the equilibration steps and generation of the P3HT thin film can now proceed. And these other steps are now starting. Now here is the step that takes the P3HT molecule and initializes a large empty box with 20, in this example it's 20 molecules for a small test, 20 P3HT molecules into our simulation box. We'll then run a LAMPS equilibration job to equilibrate the structure of this thin film of P3HT. Now this is a relatively small test for demonstration purposes but obviously with the HPC resources available in the cloud, these runs could be made much larger. Let's take a look at some intermediate results. Here we're optimizing the structure of the thiophene and the hexane. Then joining them together into the 3-HT molecule. Joining them together, five of these, into the P3-HT molecule, doing a short equilibration run in lamps. And here is our initial empty box. This is empty, of course, so that there aren't overlaps that would cause the molecular dynamics to become unstable. And here's the first data from the equilibration run. It's still going. There are three stages in this run where we are cycling the temperature and pressure in order to equilibrate the thin film. And we'll speed up the results here. We now see that this job is done and it has analyzed the film to pick out P3HT pairs in order to look at the electronic coupling between those pairs of molecules. So now let's go up and look at our task graph is now complete. All of the steps in this first part are done. And we found many pairs here and again for demonstration purposes we will only run a subset of these in order to make the demonstration time feasible. So now that we've identified and created the pairs for looking at the electronic coupling, we will add those to our task task graph. Let's first look at our thin film. Now it's not equilibrated completely here, there are some voids, but there has been some densification of these molecules, so we can pick out some pairs for some representative electronic coupling calculations. So we're only going to pick out the first six in this list to put into our graph. We're now constructing our graph. 
that's done. And we will add a final job that will collect these calculations so we can tie our gra graph together. Let's blow this up so we can look at everything. Here are the two branches of equilibrating the thiophene and hexane, joining them together, creating the thin film, equilibrating the thin film, and then generating and identifying the pairs for calculating the electronic coupling and setting up those NW Chem jobs to actually do the calculations. So let's start this. And we can now see that the task graph is going through all of the previous jobs. It records which ones are complete and then marches up to the steps here that we have added on that actually calculate the electronic coupling. And check that the slurm jobs have been submitted. There they are. And we're running one electronic coupling calculation per node here because we have so many. And now we're going to skip ahead. Our task graph is done. And let's visualize these results. Here we're looking at the values along with the actual pair that represents the part of the film that we wanted to calculate this electronic coupling. And we can see the various representative configurations of these pairs along with the electronic coupling values above. So here we have a complex workflow combining stream functions, NWChem and LAMPS together to calculate the effective charge transport through a P3HD thin film. Please check out the other tutorials on the Chemistry and Documentation page and thanks for listening.